Hello everybody and welcome to the United Stands. I'm Mark Goldbridge and Manchester United have just lost 5-0 to... Was it 5? I mean, I think it was 5. It could have been 6. It could have been 5-1. At the end of the day, Manchester United have just been humiliated by their biggest rivals at Old Trafford. They're not in a title race. They've taken 1 point from 12. They've got 14 points from 27 across the whole season. We've barely taken 50% of our points it's a shambles. It's a shit show. I look at our bench and our coaches and I just see they're about as useful as a packet of waterproof tea bags. And people expect me to go give him time. I expect the board to say, you know, let, let, let's give it a bit more time. Maybe Gary Neville and co will say he needs a bit more time. Maybe some fans will go give him a bit more time. But the reality is he's had enough time. He's had, his time's up. He's had enough time. And... There's two angles I'm going to come up at this. The first one is, Oli out. He's got to go. He has to go. I even said at the end of the game there that actually, I think in relation to Solskjaer, if he cares about this club as much as I think he does, I know it means compensation won't be there. And I just hope it doesn't become about compensation because I genuinely think he will know he can't do the job. And if he cares about Manchester United, I think he will stop doing the job. Now, I don't know whether that will happen or whether it won't, but what we need to see for the first time this season in the next 24 hours is people putting Manchester United first instead of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer or their bank balance or whatever. And I'm talking about fans, ex-players, but more importantly, the board. I can't think of a football club in the world that wouldn't sack Ole Gunnar Solskjaer now. That is, and I will get angry and rant about this, to lose to Liverpool like that, to have Van Dijk pumping his fists in front of Ronaldo, to have Liverpool fans singing Ollie's at the wheel at Old Trafford, mocking us. You talk about low points. We're digging for Australia. We're tickling Kylie and Jason's fucking feet. We've dug that low with the standards at this football club. It doesn't get any lower than that. You can talk about, oh, Van Hal's football was crap. Moyes was an embarrassment. Mourinho lost the players. None of them were 4-0 down at half-time at Old Trafford with Ronaldo in the fucking team. I mean, that is appalling. And before I come back to Oli, Harry Maguire's the captain of that team. In the first half, somebody was down injured, Cater. He stood there, miserable. He's the bloody captain. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer tells us about how important he is. He's got to play injured because he's such a leader. He couldn't lead a pack of ants to a picnic. He looks gone. He's disengaged. He's not interested. Now, whether he's a good captain or not, he's been crap the last two weeks, as has most of our outfield team. That's not exclusive. But where's the bloody leadership? You talk about passion, trust and desire. Well, Ollie does. I wouldn't mind if I saw some of that. I don't see any passion. I don't see any desire. And I certainly don't see any footballing ability. They have checked out. This myth that they're with the manager. If they're with the manager, they may as well go and play for Swindon. Because I tell you what, if that's trying, that's a disgrace. There's no leadership. There's no captaincy. There's no chemistry. There's bloody nothing. And amongst it all, they allow themselves as professionals wearing a Manchester United shirt to lose to our biggest rivals like that. And I'll come on to the manager and the coaching at the moment in a moment. And that's where the blame really lies in relation to what the change needs to be. But never forget that these players can't be trusted either. They've got to take a long, hard look at themselves. And I'm willing to give them the benefit of the doubt under a new manager because I think we're better than where we are because of the coaching. But bloody hell, lads, that's appalling. That's a bloody disgrace. To lose like that in that manner and have half the ground empty is shocking. Your professional footballers wearing shirts that Brian Robson, George Best, Duncan Edwards, Sir Bobby Charlton, Roy Keane and all the other greats have worn and you put in a piss poor performance like that. There are levels to this game. Ollie would have needed to go if we'd lost 2-0. But when you're losing 5-0, you've got to take a long hard look at yourself. There are standards and I think too often we see footballers downing tools these days. And shifting the blame. When the going gets tough, they walk. And I don't ever want to see that in a Manchester United shirt. I think it's shit. On to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. He's got to go. He's got to go. He's just not good enough. Carrick's got to go. McKenna's got to go. Phelan's got to go. I don't like it. 
I, I'm not going to be that one calling him Ollie the Wally, the PE teacher, giving him abuse, saying I told you so. There's no, there's no, there's no victory in this. This season promised so much. It was the last dance. I'm wearing the bloody T-shirt. Ronaldo comes in, second last year, and unfortunately it's gone through the same cycle it did with Mourinho. The echoes of the past have come to come to repeat themselves in bucket loads. You know, he's got to go in the next 24 hours. Now, there is a positive amongst all this shit. There is a positive because what we need now is proper leadership. And unfortunately, what we lack at that football club is proper leadership. We need somebody, and I don't know who it's going to be, to make a bloody decision tonight, to make phone calls and go, you're not fucking going home, get in the office, we're having a boardroom meeting, look at the league table, one point from 12, eight points off the top, 14 points from 27, we are not going to get top four if we let this carry on, and that's money, but it's also more important, it's about the football club, you bring in a proper manager tomorrow, there is time to rescue this season before Christmas and then hopefully get back into something. You know, Champions League's still there. FA Cup's still there. Top four stuff still there. The thing that terrifies me is that they will think Ollie's the man who can still do that. They'll go, it's still early in the season. He can turn this around. Once we get past Man City, we can start to win again. And then when we don't win again, we've wasted weeks. It's got to happen in the next 24 hours and someone in that football club's got to realise. And it might be Oli. Oli might be the man. But somebody has got to make the decision. Because I don't care whether you've been Oli in up until the last two hours. I don't care whether you've been Oli out for the last two years. It, it's about Manchester United now. It's about standards. It's not about Oli in, Oli out. It's about standards. The standards on the football club now have probably never been this low. Certainly not been this low since Sir Alex Ferguson retired. So you can like Oli more than Mourinho. You can like him more than Van Hal. But the reality is just presided over the shittest result we've had in, in many a year. And you can't let that lie. You can't... If you let that lie, they look... This is... For me, this is now with the Glazers and Ed Woodward. Because if they say that's acceptable, we may as well fucking forget it. If, you're, if, if they're going to come out tomorrow, we're still with the manager, we should protest. There should be things going on. It's, it's bigger than Oli. It's bigger than Carrick. It's bigger than Ronaldo. The club has to act like a football club. It's not about, oh, let's sack Oli or anything like that. That has to be part of it. But if you ignore losing 5-0 at home to Liverpool and say, we're sticking with the manager, I, there is no big club in the world that would accept that. Imagine if Real Madrid lost 5-0 at home to Barcelona. Do you think their manager would carry on? Someone's going to tell me that actually did happen, but it shouldn't happen. It's now beyond Oli in or Oli out. It's now all eyes on the board. Are you basically going to tell us? Are you going to really have the balls to tell us that losing 5-0 to Liverpool, who were in third gear, Liverpool didn't even play that well. They played well for about 15 minutes across the whole game and the rest of it, they just took the mickey. The club now have a decision to make and it can only be one decision. We have to change. Get on the phone, get older Paul Pogba, get older Rafael Varane, get Zidane's number, have a chat, get him over. That They've got to do it and they've got to do it quickly because if they don't, the laughing stock that we are becomes an even bigger laughing stock than we've ever been. We're going to do the player ratings. Link in the video description. Mark every player out of 10, 6 being the average. We've also got a fan forum, which will be going on between 7 and 8. So there's loads to get through, and we'll have the fan vlogs as well. But there's a lot of things I want to pick into as well. Uh, burns my soul that no one tackled Van Dijk when he threatened Ronaldo. I would have two-footed him. I've got nothing against Van Dijk. I've got nothing against Liverpool. They deserve to win it. But when Ronaldo kicked that ball into Jones, which was a bit naughty, it turns into a bit of a fracar. I had a two-footed Van Dijk when he when he started acting Billy Big Bollocks. So I'd have got a red card for it, but you know what? The game, it was going that way. It was that sort of a game. Honestly, Mark, Ollie's run this year reminds me of your career mode with your first year as manager. God help us against Spurs and City, says Dennis. Thanks for the super chat, David. Uh, we are absolutely wasting the GOAT's return, says BG, and Ollie needs to leave and save his legacy. Forget Zidane and Conte, says Apollo. The thing is, look... I've got to say this because I think there'll be a lot of people relishing this tonight. There'll be a lot of people being quite abusive tonight. There'll be a lot of people very satisfied with this tonight. There's two things I want to say. First of all, I take no... This is why I would never say I want Manchester United to lose a game to get rid of a manager. Because I feel gutted. Liverpool at home 5-0. We'll probably never do that at Anfield in my lifetime. We'll never be able to do that. 
That is humiliation on a level. My phone's, I know Liverpool fans, absolutely ripping the piss. They're absolutely over the moon. And you've got to take it as a fan. You have to take it. I never saw that coming. You have to take it. I didn't see us losing the game, let alone getting hammered. That's not losing. That's obliteration. We will never do that at Anfield, I don't think. And if we did, I would never shut up about it. So we've we've not just lost. We've been absolutely humiliated. And, and that is just horrible. Absolutely horrible. And I, 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 I cannot come to terms with it. But... But when I see Ole Gunnar Solskjaer walking off and the face, I, I just think he's a human being and I feel devastated for him. There's not one part of me thinks that sympathetically let's keep him in the job and start singing Ollie's at the wheel. I'm not going to do that. But what I will say is I am devastated for him um, because he is a United fan. He is a United legend as a player and he's way out of his depth. He's not good enough. He's got to go. But there is a human being there. There's a human being there, and I, and I hate to see it. I do, and maybe that's stupid. Maybe maybe that's just empathetic. I don't know, but I feel terrible about it. But he's got to go, and it's it's not about you know taking him out of his house and putting him in prison. It's about sacking him from a job for which he's paid very very very, very money to do, and it's also about sacking him from a job that Liverpool have got Klopp, Chelsea have got Tuchel, Pep have got uh, Man City have got Pep. Manchester United have got a bunch of people who, to be honest with you, and let's let's throw, throw a little bit of comedy on it, they're about as useful as tits on a nun. The, 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 I said that in the game and I'll say it now. We're tits on a nun, FC. We're useless. Absolutely useless. And taking away the sentiment, because some of our ex-players and fans have got locked into the sentimentality, sentimentality. And I tell you what, shame on the club as well, because I know exactly what they were doing this week. Talking about if you boo, you're not a real fan. You should be singing. That's what real fans do. I tell you what, I applaud the fans this week who criticised and saw this coming. Who, who saw Atalanta for what it was. The players and the fans saving a result. Who saw Leicester for what it was. Tactically inept. And who saw that today and wasn't surprised. We weren't surprised. We just didn't expect it. It was coming. It's not a shock. And certain people have deflected the blame and tried to make out that they're top reds because they're doing it the right way and buried their head in the sand to the fact that the coaching is crap. And look, I said it about Carragher. He's a Liverpool player. He's a Liverpool fan. And he saw what we saw. Tactically, it's about coaching. But some people decided to put friendships and sentimentality first and allowed the club to, to, to basically play them. And that's what's happened. Because when you look at the game, and I said it at the end of last season, and many of you were with me, and some of you reminded me at the start of the season, but it was like, I, was, I never said if he picked McFred in the first game, I'd say Oli out. You know, we've got Ronaldo, we've got Varane. I didn't expect that. And you've got to give it a little bit of time this season to see what happens. But I did say at the end of last season, if we come into this season and he's still picking McFred, I'll end up being Oli out very quickly. And what's happened? Game nine of the season. And I'm saying to you, Oli out, effectively. I'm not screaming it like some people will be doing on fan vlogs and everything tonight. Some people will be going, get him out, give it to Giggsy till the end of the season. It's wrong, oh, look at me, look at me ranting, I want the views. You will get that, you will get that. And maybe their anger is justified, but I don't think anger is justified tonight. If you're angry and shouting, you're faking it. Because we had, it's not like we, we had 90 minutes to absorb what was happening in front of us. And 90 minutes is long enough to analyze things and come to a calm conclusion and my calm conclusion is ollie out he has to go because he's not good enough there's not a doubt in my mind and it's not a shock and i don't know what paul skulls we have ferdinand gary neville roy Keane are going to say tonight but if they're going to go now you know what i think the writing's on the wall oh, come on grow up and be honest you knew this anyway you just didn't want to say it it's not it's not like this is the tipping point this was just the final nail in many nails that have been in the coffin for, for quite a period of time. But for me, I said it would be sad, and, and so it is. His obsession with favourites has been his downfall. But his obsession with favourites has exposed his lack of coaching ability and also the lack of the coaching ability around him. Because if Carrick isn't saying it, or McKenna isn't saying it, or Phelan isn't saying it, well, they're all as bad as each other. Everybody, even rival fans, but let's be honest, 99% of Manchester United fans have had it to the back teeth with McTominay and Fred. We're 3-0 down and Cater has a part to play in every goal. And Cater's a midfielder and neither McTominay or Fred have picked him up at any point. 
The team news comes out and everybody says, oh, he's picking McTominay and Fred again. What is he doing? His obsession with McTominay and Fred has cost him his job. But his obsession with McTominay and Fred will forever be a massive, massive point of bewilderment for me. I'll never understand it. Midfield have been shit all season and he's still gone with McTominay and Fred. He's benched Paul Pogba. Jaden Sancho, 74 million pounds. He should be sacked for this. 74 million pounds spent on Jaden Sancho. Didn't even use him. That could have been him. That could have been Declan Rice. That's 74 million with another 10 could have been Declan Rice. He buys a right winger who's fantastic, by the way, but he doesn't use. Donny van der Beek played against West Ham six games since. He's not played a minute and he played well in the midfield. This obsessive favouritism has screwed him up. Picking Harry Maguire last week when he was injured screwed him up. Rashford and Greenwood, wide forwards, who will never create anything for Ronaldo. And he does it. I mean, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, Michael Carrick, Mike Phelan, McKenna. They love Manchester United. They want to succeed. And that's what makes it worse. They actually want to succeed. It's not intentional sabotage, even though we think it's stupid. They actually think their ideas are going to work. Two wide forwards who are greedy and don't track back. Two holding midfielders who don't pick up the runners and can't pass. It's never going to work, is it? Like Paul Skull says, Klopp must have been rubbing his hands. They don't pick up the runners. They can't create anything. We'll have a field day in the midfield. And my fullbacks are going to have a field day because neither of their wingers track back. And as long as we, we're careful about the long ball, they're fucked. I mean, literally, long ball FC, moments FC, with two inept midfielders and two wide players who won't create for the best striker in the world and also won't track back. And that's the tactics of a Manchester United manager. And I know people talk about Graham Potter. And I don't think he could do the Man United job because he's not used to managing a big club or big players. But he'd definitely do better than what we've got. But that cannot be what the... I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they sacked Ollie and brought Southgate in. Because that's how crap our owners are. We've got to make changes at this football club. The protests in the summer were fantastic and they were done for the right reason. They need to return in a more sustained way and I'm not talking about getting games cancelled but we need genuine change in that football club we are managed by we are owned by people who own us for money we've got people on the board who aren't United fans they're just there because I don't know why they're there you know maybe they've had a successful career here or there we need United people running that football club and there are people in positions of power all over that club whether it's fitness, social media, communications, on the board. And they're not United fans. They're business people. And the trouble with that is they're not emotionally attached. So when they go into work tomorrow and this talk of a new owner, a new manager, they'll go, hmm, they'll look at it at business first. If they felt the pain of that result, look, imagine if I'm Man United's head of communications or, or head of marketing or head of social or whatever, I'm going to work tomorrow. That's disappointing, that is. Um, but I'm, I'm asked about what should happen next. I'm like, well, you know, there's this, that and the other. If I'm a Man United fan and I go in, I'm like, look, he's got to go. I love him, but he's got to go. And that's the problem. We're not being run like a football club. We're being run like a business. But above all that, people will say money's been spent in the summer. You're making excuses. I'm not making excuses for Oli. I'm firmly saying he's got to go. There's a part of me that thinks he might resign. I think he's a man of morals. I think he might resign. But then again, I also think he's stubborn, as he's shown with McTominay and Fred, and he may well stay. But there has to be a change and it needs to be fast. We haven't got a game until Saturday. If you sacked him and brought a manager in by Tuesday, at least they've got two or three days to do something. If we stick with him, I just don't see where you come back. Oh, we go and beat Spurs. I guarantee if they don't sack him, we'll probably beat Spurs and then we'll be in the same position in two weeks, getting humiliated by Man City. We cannot deal with Liverpool in third gear. What are we going to do against Man City? And look, as well, can I just add to this as well? Before we do the player ratings, one point from our last 12 is relegation form, let alone sacking form. 14 points from 27 with the team that we've got is abysmal. But let's not forget, West Ham, West Ham had no Antonio. Everton had no Ricarlison and no Calvert-Lewin. Leicester had no Ndidi. Liverpool had no Fabinho and Mane didn't start. Wolves, we shouldn't have won. It was a that jammy late goal. So how many points has David De Gea won us as well? Like, re 14 points, he's pushing it. I reckon we should have 10. Like, he's got, he's got to go. 
I don't take any satisfaction in it. I'm not screaming and shouting about it because I want views. I'm saying from a point of view that how can you not look at that? Yeah, I'm sad. I'm fucking sad because I really was quite looking forward to this season and I thought with Ronaldo coming back, you know, maybe, you know, we can build on something. But the players have given up. They could, you know, I tell you what, if any of them dares to tweet something tonight about going again, we're feeling it, this, that, and the other, I couldn't... It gets to a point with a footballer where you're a multimillionaire and I don't give a shit whether you're feeling it or not. Shut your gob. Shut up and stay quiet for a week. Nobody wants to hear a player going, we're feeling your pain, this, that, and the other. Because that performance doesn't warrant we feel your pain. No player apart from David De Gea, and I still don't want David De Gea to do it, should be saying anything about that. But ultimately, this comes down to an obsession with favourites, and we've seen it with McTominay and Fred. We've seen it with Rashford and Greenwood. And I like Rashford and Greenwood, but only one can play. You can't have two wide forwards who don't track back, who don't create things. One plays, and then you put Pogba or Sancho on the other side. And, and, and I don't know why he stopped doing that, but... You play Ronaldo, everyone know. You're playing with 10 men. No, it's nothing to do with Ronaldo, Liam. And uh, something is wrong with the rating of Oli should be less, says Linus. Imagine how hard it must be for Ronaldo to play in this United team, the standard of United team he was accustomed to compared to this, says Psycho. I'm Oli out, but seeing his face after that game killed me. Please remember everyone, he tried his best and is still a legend, says Golden Goose. Well, the real ones will appreciate that, re that, that goose. But you know what? I did feel for him at the end and I knew I'd feel sad, but he's not been sacked yet. So don't get too sympathetic. But if he is sacked, I, you know, I, I will not be disrespecting him and being abusive to him because I just don't feel that. But ultimately, we do live in an entertainment business. You can be critical. And it's, a, it's not about the manager. It's not about the owners. It's not about the players. Manchester United in 50 years' time will not have this manager. They won't have these owners and they won't have these players. But it will still be there. It's about Manchester United. You know when you watch these DVDs or videos of what happened in the 60s or the 70s or the 50s or the 90s? It's Manchester United. Manchester United moves on. And we can't be sympathetic. We can't be mates rates. We're Manchester United. The standards are there. And look, maybe after Ollie's gone, Maguire needs to go. Maybe Shaw needs to go. Maybe Bruno needs to go. We'll figure that out. Nobody's bigger than this football club, but first things first, we've we've got to we've got to make a change. I'm disgraced, Mark. I've never seen a United performance like that against Liverpool. John as well. And can we bring it back to that? This is not look. We've conceded 11 goals in three games. We've been battered by Leicester and we've been battered by Liverpool. Look, Villa only beat us 1-0. We drew with Everton. Everton should have beaten us. But we've been stuffed by Leicester and stuffed by Liverpool. Absolutely stuffed. Our captain is centre-back and he's conceded nine goals. There's no organisation. They've given up. There's no tactics. You've got to make a change. It's humiliating. And there's no point. There'll be some people saying... We'll give him a bit more time. Why? We're not a charity. Why give him more time? Why bother? Three years he's been here. He said himself the other day, I've been in this position loads of times. I know what needs to happen. But this time it's not working. He doesn't deserve any more time. With all my heart, I wish he did. But he doesn't deserve more time because he's not good enough. And it's not just him. I don't want to see Solskjaer sacked and Fletcher ma uh, assistant manager with Carrick and McKenna. I think Carrick and McKenna are more to blame than Ollie, because tactically he says he doesn't do the tactics. So please keep that in mind. If you're thinking, yay, we sacked Solskjaer, but we keep Carrick and McKenna, they're the problem. The coaching is fucking awful. It's terrible. It's not just the manager. It's the whole coaching staff need to go. Clean sweep, proper manager in with a proper coaching team, ASAP. I'm disgraced, Mark. I've never seen a United performance like that against Liverpool, says John. And I'm sick of Harry walking around with his mouth open and nothing coming out. Get the armband off him, says Zhao. Uh, we have phenomenal squad. Look at what Chelsea did. This is right time to Ferrari to leave. He's still legend of the Cubs, says Nick Hill. You know what hurts? Sir Alex has won the league with weaker teams. Oli can simply move on, says Rowan. You know what? You can talk about individual players. Please, please do. But I said it when the team news came out. You look at the first team of Manchester United, player for player, forget, forget, look, Liverpool are better than us, absolutely better than us, but player for player, I'd argue our team is as good as Liverpool, if not better, first 11s against first 11s. Bench, we piss all over them. Our bench is better than theirs, but Liverpool are better than us. 
And I don't know whether people understand what I'm saying. I think player for player, our first team is better than Liverpool. And I think our bench is way better. But of course, Liverpool are better than us. They've just beaten us 5-0. But my point is, it's coaching. The reason Liverpool are way better than us is because Klopp and his coaches get the best out of his players in the system. And the reason I think Norwich would give us a game at the moment is because we've got all these players who are shite because the coaching is shite. And it's a prime lesson that, you know, it's a prime lesson in life that just because you've got brilliant players, if you haven't got the right coaches, you won't win. You can't buy a brilliant squad and then put a Pratt in charge. And effectively, in footballing terms, we're being managed by a bunch of Pratts. Why well, feel bad for Ollie? Which club will take Ollie if he goes? I feel bad for him, Sheriff, because it's, it's football and you should be sacked when you're not good enough. But... I feel bad for Ollie because as a human being, he gave me one of the greatest nights of my footballing life in 1999. And to see him walking off like that, broken, that's a human being. That's a human level. I'm not, no part of me is sympathetic saying he shouldn't get the sack. He should get the sack. But I take no pleasure in him getting the sack. He, ultimately, he sacked himself. He could have listened to the warning signs. He could have listened to people saying, why are you picking McTominay and Fred? And he stubbornly decided not to. And this is where the sympathy drops a little bit because we're talking about the football here. McTominay and Fred have been an obsession, obsession of his and he's stubbornly stuck by them. Donny van der Beek should, should have been given a chance and he stubbornly wouldn't give him a chance. So, you know, Pogba on the bench, Sancho on the bench, favouritism. I mean, even for me last season... Eric Bay should have been playing more and he didn't do it. So I think that realistically, um, he's got to go. And, and I'm glad that we've spoken about it in a pragmatic way without shouting and screaming. I'm sorry, but how is Ronaldo not an issue? This team can be beat City twice last year. How is he not least? A Mick, Mickey, what are you talking about? I'm not spending a second of my day talking about Ronaldo being the problem. If you can't look at the coaching and see what the problem... Oh, we beat Man City twice last year and now, we, now we've lost 5-0 because of Ronaldo. What tree have you fallen at? Who's put his Christmas tree up? Bloody hell. Mark, two out of the three biggest Premier League home defeats have been under Oli. Tottenham won six and today isn't that enough, said, says Samuel. Um, Andrew Valencia, thank you very much for joining the Members Club. Time to bring uh, Galada. He has won it all at River Plate. Uh, Man United aren't... This is the trouble now. We're in the hands of the board. Whether Look, Oli needs to go. He knows he's... Oli, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer knows he should be sacked. Like, if I could explain it like this, I think Oli needs to be sacked and the whole coaching staff needs to go. I'm 100% sure that's the right thing to do. And I'm sure many of you feel the same. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer knows he should be sacked. So forget Oli now. He knows he should be sacked. We know he should be sacked. The media knows he should be sacked. Everybody knows Solskjaer should be sacked. So actually, moaning about Oli doesn't matter anymore. It's all eyes on the board. And my worry is, people can talk about Ten Hag or the River Plate manager or Zidane. Do you trust this board to one, do not need what do what needs to be done, and two, have a Scooby-Doo about who should be brought in? Because I don't. I genuinely do not trust this board, and I think they're the pro biggest problem at this football club. So I, I expect Oli to be in charge next week. And I don't think that's fair. And I don't think that's the standards this Manchester United Football Club should have. And I think if he is in charge next week, it's on the board. It's not on him. He can't sack himself. It's not McTominay and Fred's fault that they get picked. That's Ollie's fault. And it's not Ollie's fault if he doesn't get the sack. That's the Glazers' fault. And that's the way to look at it. We're in the hands of the board now. And I think the board is shit. Mark, pal, enough is uh, enough. He has to go and the rest of the coaching staff on my lonely journey home, says Flex. Uh, if Oli had any pride, he'd resign. PS Mark, I think the player ratings are broke. I'm going to have a look, Angel. And Ravi, uh, thank you very much for joining the Members Club. Um, links in the chat if you want to do that. Uh, uh, Paul Ince says he's speechless. Let's see if we can get him on tomorrow at 10. We'll get him on. Um, if Oli had any pride, he'd resign. Uh, I went. I want a new manager with new ideas, says Sharath. I want a manager with some ideas. We've got no ideas at the moment. They will wait till after Man City game to sack. The trouble with that, Dan, is it's six points. And even if we won those two games, do you think we're going to win them in the way that we need to win them? Do you think we're going to beat Man City? I don't. I think we may as well start now. Start the change now. Make the change now. Make the change now. And start rebuilding now. Because, you know... 
Honestly, though, though, to take Oli in some defence, what midfield wingers we could get give us a football we want and need. Sancho hasn't impressed. Pogba can't play in a CM, DM. Ask what does a DM hold? Well, he should have bought a DM. How, how, can, how can you defend a manager for spending £74 million on a winger he doesn't use and then say he needs a DM? Mate, he's fucked up. He's absolutely screwed this club up. He, he's got to go. He's got to go. And you know what? There isn't... I don't, wear, I don't care if you're Gary Neville whether you're Roy Keane, whether you're a top bloody Manchester United fan or whatever you want to call yourself. I don't care whether you're a Liverpool fan, media, journalist. If you're sat there defending that, saying that you've got to give him more time, you look a prat. Because if you are defending that, what's the point? If you're saying give him more time when you've lost 5-0 to your biggest rival, who are we? We're gone, we're finished. If he survives that and we carry on down this route and people tell us to carry on down that route, they don't know what this football club is. Busby, Babes, Best, um, Char, uh, Charlton and Law, Brian Robson, Roy Keane, Sir Alex Ferguson, Eric Cantona, Cristiano Ronaldo the first time. They're the standards of this football club. They're the standards I've been brought up on by my granddad, by watching them myself. The standards of Manchester United are that we should compete for everything in world football. We've just been humiliated by our biggest rival, 5-0 at home. That's the sort of result that's reserved for Norwich. And we're, and people are going to tell me that we should give it more time. You're a joker. An absolute joker if you think we should be giving him more time after that. Because you've took the standards of this football club and you've dug right, you've dug so deep. Old Kylie and Jason are saying hello in Australia. It's not good enough. Useful as a packet of... Waterproof tea bags at the moment, United. I have to apply for uh, uh, my exam starting next week, uh, says Michael Kim. The only argument at this point is pointless. The board is just as much to blame. It's on the board now, Stephen. If they're the ones who can sack the manager. So I personally think anybody screaming Ollie out, you don't need to scream Ollie out. Why, why are you screaming Ollie out? Why are you being abusive about Ollie? If you're screaming Ollie out now, you're only doing it because you want attention. I haven't screamed Ollie out. Ollie out. I'll say it, but you don't need to scream it. It's the, it's the most obvious thing to do in the world. It's not even controversial. Ollie in is controversial. If somebody comes out and say Ollie in, that needs to go viral. If somebody's saying stick by the manager, that's bloody viral. Because that's stupid, in my opinion. Ollie out is obvious. The argument now moves to the board. I'm looking at the board. How incompetent are you? Because I think you're pretty incompetent. I don't think you'll do what needs to be done. There are two managers of real quality, free. And our manager and coaching is rubbish. It's on the board now. It's not on Oli. Ollie, Ollie's sacked. He knows he's sacked. Well, he, he might not get sacked, but he knows he should be. Watch him walking off. He knows. That's not a manager walking off thinking, we'll go again. That's a manager walking off going, I'm, I, I should be sacked. He knows he should be sacked. So Oli out isn't even a thing. It's about how competent this board is. And this board has got to let him go. And if they don't let him go, it should be Glazers out being sung. Not Ollie out. Glazers out. Let's see what they do. Uh, wait until Monday Night Football when Gary and his mates defend him and his coaches. Um, Adi Kenny, thank you very much for becoming a member. Lewis Park, thank you very much for becoming a member. DK's birthday's been ruined. Uh, make sure you subscribe, by the way, bottom right-hand corner. And thanks, everyone, who's smashing a like on the video. We have got the fan forum starting very soon. We'll get uh, other people's opinions. But I want to go through the player ratings. Let's start off. I mean, David De Gea was a 7 for me. I'd give him man of the match as well. I mean, it's, it's, it's only going to be downhill from here. Links in the video description as well, if you want to do your player ratings. Mark every player out of 10, 6 being the average. Look, 100% blame sits with the coaches. 100% manager should be sacked, Okay. But beyond that, we've just lost to our biggest rival at home 5-0. I cannot, and I don't think the players should expect me to, give them good scores. wan for me, 3. Victor Lind, I mean, you're giving him a 6. 3. Maguire, 3. We, I, think, I think these have been sabotaged. I think we've been sabotaged by fans of other clubs because they want them to do well. Uh, Luke Shaw, 3. Uh, Fred Rodriguez, 3. Scott McTominay, 3. This, these have been sabotaged. They're broke. Three. Three. They're broke. These are absolutely broke. Three. Three. No. Three. Th these are broke. These are not right. Somebody's Something's gone wrong here. Three. Three. 6.8. Come on. I don't know what's gone wrong with the website there. That's a joke. 
absolute joke. So I don't know why we haven't got accurate score ratings because that's an absolute joke. We've beaten teams and people have had less than that. So we've, we've either been uh, sabotaged by... Um, We've either been sabotaged by rival fans, uh, in which case, fair enough. Um, lots of people messaging me saying that I think this is the end. I would be very surprised if this is not the end for Ole Gunnar Solskjaer tonight. Um, on a serious level, I really, really would. But um, I, I, I would have given every player, outfield player, a three. From Ronaldo to wan Harry Maguire would have got a lower score, two. He's the captain. Fred and McTominay would have got a two because I thought they were shambles from minute one. But other than that, um, I, I think nobody gets better than a three. A massive part of that, of course, is down to uh, the coaching. I think we're in a massive. Uh, I think I think the coaching's been a been a shambles. But ultimately, it, it, you know, he's got to go. He's got to go. And for me, let's be grown up about this. We've been absolutely annihilated by our biggest rival, and I don't think Liverpool got out of third gear. If there is any Liverpool fan watching. I don't think you played anywhere near your best and you still annihilated us. So it wasn't I don't think that was vintage Liverpool. I think that was Liverpool going through the you know, just cruising. They never had to get out of third gear, they never they never had to really push. I I, I hardly noticed Van Dyke in that game. He may as well have his slippers on. He had nothing to do. It was a shambles of a performance from Manchester United, and it's not acceptable, and nobody should be accepting it. And if I hear people saying, well, give him a little bit more time, if we're giving him a little bit more time, who are we? 5-0 at home at Old Trafford in a game you have to win and you get annihilated. No fight, no passion, no ability. It's not a shot. We lost 4-2 last week and we've just lost 5-0. Why are they putting tweets out about going again? It's a shambles. And if we can accept that, then where will, where will United be in 10 years' time? If you can lose 5-0 to Liverpool at home and keep your manager and keep your coaches... We need a proper manager who comes in and goes, get out, get out, get out. First thing I would do as manager of that football club, De Gea's in goal, wan right back, Luke Shaw left back, Varane, Maguire's in trouble. I'll give him a chance, but he's in trouble. Van der Beek, um, I don't know who I'm going to play with Van der Beek, but Van der Beek and somebody, buy somebody as soon as possible. Uh, Rashford off the left, Sancho off the right, Bruno, Ronaldo, and start playing some fucking football. Because at the moment, it's a shambles. Anyway, I've had enough of my say. Fan forum. I might be back with you in a little bit because we might get some breaking news a little bit later. Some messages are starting to pop in. So I'm going to make some calls. But we've got the fan forum now. Fan vlogs are going to be coming in. Let's hit the fan forum. See what Alex, Kevin, everyone's got to say. Uh, you can raid it with Ollie in. You can raid it with Ollie out. It's up to you. I know what I'll be saying. I'll see you on the fan forum. <laughs> 